In this video, I'm going to show you how I prepared and pasteurized these nine sawdust blocks at home in my kitchen. If you want to scale up sawdust block production but lack the space or funds for a larger pasteurization chamber, this technique I've developed works really well in a home setting. I'm going to take you through how to hydrate and prepare your sawdust blocks, how to create a pasteurization water bath that heats blocks to perfect pasteurization temperatures at home, allowing you to inoculate blocks with grain spawn without the use of a flow hood. First thing I'm going to do is weigh out 6 kilograms of oak hardwood fuel pellets into a bucket. I'm going to be using the metric scale for this video because working out hydration levels in the metric system is far easier than the imperial system because 1 litre of water equals 1 kilogram. So if you wanted a 50% hydration level and you poured out 6 kilograms worth of sawdust then all you need is six liters of water so it's a very simple way of measuring hydration levels either way i'm going to put a calculator on the website you can go and use that but if you don't have access to the internet when you're doing it if you weigh out six kilograms to get 50 percent hydration you need six liters of water and if you're doing 55 percent hydration you need 7.3 liters of water so I'm just moving the sawdust into a 20 litre bucket here and then I add in my 7.3 litres of hot water and I just allow this to expand and then I give it a bit of a mix. I just keep giving this a good mix around until all of the hardwood fuel pellets have fully absorbed the water and they start turning into very fine sawdust. What I do is I mix the top so that it becomes very fine and then I shave it off with a jug and then put that into the bag and just keep working down through the bucket making sure that all the sawdust is very fine and mixed in well with the water. Fill the bags until there's about four fingers of space between the filter patch and the top of the sawdust and I usually just gauge whether I've got the right amount in the bag visually and then I'll just even them out once I've got them all done. It's important for the next step to make sure that all the substrate blocks are even so if you have a look here some of mine are smaller than the other ones so I just take a little bit off the top of the larger ones and then place it into the smaller bags and then press them all down until I've got just about an even level between all of the blocks.
Next thing I'm going to do is place all my sawdust blocks into this plastic tote here and this is going to serve as our water bath. I'll add the dimensions for all the items that I'm about to use in the description below. The next thing you will need is a oven rack like this which fits inside of the tote. Previously I've used a bit of metal fencing like this but the straight lines of the oven rack make the blocks more manageable and helps the bag maintain a better shape. All six sawdust blocks go into the tote and then we pull the plastic through the gaps in the oven rack and then push it right down so that it's tight up against the top of the sawdust. So it's a little bit fiddly and it can take a couple of minutes to get them all in the right position and get the plastic through the correct gap and you want to make sure that you maintain and leave a small gap at the end of the water bath for the water heater to go in. We're going to be using a sous vide to heat the water bath. A sous vide is normally used to cook meats in a kitchen, but all it does is heat up water to a certain temperature and then maintain the water at that temperature for the length of time you ask it to. This makes it perfect for our needs because it maintains the ideal pasteurization temperatures consistently for the amount of time we set it for. If a sous vide is too expensive you can use a bucket heater instead and I'll add the links to both of these in the description below. Next you just want to keep filling up the tote with hot water to the point where the sawdust blocks are completely submerged so the very top of the sawdust is submerged under water. These sawdust blocks are extremely buoyant so you're going to need to weigh them down by putting weight on top of the oven rack and that's what the oven rack is there for. Don't tie the top of the bags before you pour the water in. You want to pour the water in and as the water rises up it'll push, it'll create like a vacuum seal inside the bag by pushing out the excess air that might be inside the bags. Once the sawdust blocks are fully submerged in water, you want to turn on your sous vide to run between 140F to 170F, which is between 60C and 77C. You want to set it to maintain these temperatures for at least two hours, but it might take longer. 
monitor the core temperature of the sorus block we're going to use a digital meat thermometer like this and place it into the center of one of the sorus blocks To secure the bags I'm going to be using a reusable zip tie and you want to fold the top of the bag down and then fold it in half and then put the zip tie around it and pull it as tight as possible. This should secure the bags until inoculation. At this point my alarm has gone off, you can see the internal temperature of the sawdust block is 71 degrees so I set a timer for one hour and then when the timer is done I remove all of the blocks from the water. I place my next set of sawdust blocks into the same water again, I give the water a little bit of a top up with a kettle and it should be a little bit faster this time because the sous vide has to do less heating. I leave the blocks to cool overnight and then the next day we are going to do inoculation. So first thing I do is wipe down my bench with alcohol. Next, I give the outside of the jaws a good wipe with alcohol, focusing mainly on the rim of the jaw. I remove the reusable zip tie from the top of the bags and you can see it still has a little bit of a seal there. I make sure that my grain spawn is loose, as you can see here. And I open the top of the bag, 
pull the grain spawn in and then quickly reseal the bag by doing a fold down and then a fold in half. I place the reusable zip tie over the top and then tighten as hard as possible. Repeat this for all of your bags. And finally, once all of your bags have been completed and they are secure, you can mix the grain spawn with the sawdust and then place them into incubation. Hopefully you found this video helpful, if you did give it a like and if you have any questions just leave a comment below, normally I'll get back to you as soon as possible.